bozo, CC, ABC, and zero. Okay, and now you can cross out B. Everybody see that? Yeah, I guess we don't need CC twice, that's right. But it don't hurt. <laughs> right, you don't need it twice. Is there a minimum Chomsky normal form? I don't know. I think not. I don't think so. Good we, question. These are really sets, not lists, right? So we, we should... Right. Even sets can right, right. It's, you really can't have CC twice there. Okay. Uh, nobody's wondering about it, so I won't mention it. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's, <laughs> that's all right. Uh, where was I here? All right, we did E production, we did unit productions, we did long productions. All right, now some subtleties with unit productions. Here's another example. S goes to A, 1, 1. A goes to B, single 1. B goes to S, single zero. Ow. All right, you're a computer, and you were told to look for unit productions, and then go ahead and copy all the other productions you found there, not creating any new unit productions, ideally. So let's start with S goes to A. What do we do? We go down to A, and we see that A generates B in 1. So we don't add B here. That we don't want to do. We don't want to add new unit productions. But we are going to add in 1. Now we can cross that out. A goes to B. So we go down to B. That means this goes to 0. Bye bye B. And now B goes to S. And S has 1, 1, and 1. So we put those both in. And now we're done. Why did we not uh, put the S on the A line? Because that would give us a new unit production that we don't want. We don't want to make new unit productions while we do this. But the implication of your question is good. I mean, this isn't right. We missed something. Because S can actually get 0. We didn't get it. How come? So look, this doesn't happen so often. It happens when you get these chains that, that recursively go back in unit productions. You could go you know, uh, a year, and your program would never see a grammar like this. And the first day it sees a grammar like this, it's going to give you the wrong Chomsky normal form. So, so what's the subtlety here? The subtlety is what you have to do is similar to what we did with nullable productions. When you look at a unit production, you don't just look at that unit production, but you go forward and look to see if the A has any unit productions. And you make a list of all the single non-terminals that S can get to, even if it's by more than one step. So before we went backwards from the E to the front, now we're going forwards from one step to two step to three step unit productions. So what are the unit productions for A? What are the list of them? It goes, sorry, for S. It can go to A and it can also go to B. What about for A? A goes to B, and B goes to S, so it gets 2. And what about B, S, and then A? You first make these lists. So you have a whole list of the unit productions. And then you simultaneously, just like we did before, add all the productions in. So let's do the example again the right way. S has two unit productions, one one away and one two away. But together, they're AB. Therefore, we look at AB combined and add all the things that AB go to. So we get 1 and 0. Then you go to A. Add all the things that B and S go to. What's going to happen is that every one of these will have, will have all these things in them. And this way, you don't miss anything. So it's the same subtlety as before that it's possible that you have to look ahead to other 
extended unit productions the same way we had to look ahead to extended E productions. OK, questions about this? When we started this grammar, it looked like this. What does this grammar generate? It generates three strings, right? 1, 1, 1, and 0. If I take away any of these productions, one production in this grammar, does it still generate those three strings? So anything you can get rid of and have it still generate those three strings. No, but there's no way to get two A's in here, right? So we couldn't do that. Is there anything useless here? Anything that that isn't getting used? We need the A it goes to B to be able to get the zero. I don't know if we need B goes to S. Might be able to get rid of that. I don't know, but we certainly can't do much to this grammar. Look at this grammar, the resulting grammar. We don't need any of these. All these six productions are completely useless. You can't get to them at all once the unit productions are gone. Okay? I showed you before how E productions can give you unit productions, and now I'm showing you how you, when you get rid of unit productions, you can actually get useless symbols. Symbols that do nothing for your grammar. The whole grammar is S goes to 1, 1, 1, 0. And I got this A and B now that I've erased the unit productions of. And who cares what they can do because I can't even get there from S. So the last part of the day, I want to talk about getting rid of useless symbols. And I want you to do it at the beginning and at the very end because the procedure can actually generate more useless symbols. It's not enough just to do it once at the beginning. So Mike Sipser in his book doesn't talk about useless. The order though is E production and E production block. And then again. again useless symbols, yeah. Where's my useless symbol? Okay, here we go. Useless symbols. Like everything in grammars, there's a subtlety here too. The idea is straightforward, and then there's a subtlety. And I'll put down the idea without the subtlety first. Two steps to this process. Think of this as an example for your motivation. Why are these symbols useless? Because they can't be reached from S. If there was any production out here like A, B, then these symbols would not be useless. These symbols are useless because you can't get to them from the start point. Okay? It's like a big cave, and there's no way to get to a particular room from the opening of the cave. So what do you care about that room for? All right. On the other hand, there's another way symbols can be useless. Now I can get to CC. But I can't do a darn thing with CC once I get there because it doesn't exist in any other productions. Or even worse, it does, it does exist. But it doesn't terminate. So there's two things, two reasons you can be useless. One is because nobody can reach you. And the other is because once they get to you, you don't do anything useful. OK, two ends on this. And we've got to check both. And it makes a big difference which end you check first. So I'm going to write down the two things we're going to look for and we'll talk about how we'll do it. So step one is find all the non-terminals that can actually generate something. This excludes things like C. 
find all the things that actually generate something that don't sit around